All right, we're gonna look at right triangle relationships. We're gonna look at a few different things, a few special triangles, and then we're gonna talk a little bit about trigonometry and what you need to know about trigonometry on the Ames test. So first of all, in our right triangle relationships, there's a few special triangles that it's gonna help for you to be familiar with. The first is the isosceles right triangle. Remember, isosceles means that two of the sides are congruent. If two of the sides are congruent, two of the angles are congruent, and since it's a right triangle, that means these two angles must be 45 degrees. So another way we call this triangle is a 45-45-90 triangle, naming it by its angles. So you're going to look for two things. You're either going to look for a 40, or excuse me, a 90 degree angle and a 45 degree angle, or you're going to look for a 90 degree angle and two congruent sides. So you're going to look for those congruent marks. Now, if you have a triangle like this, the sides have a very special relationship. Obviously, these two sides here are the same. So if they're the same length and we don't know what they are, we just call them x. Then the hypotenuse is going to be whatever that side is multiplied by the square root of 2. So we say that that's x root 2. So let's look at a really quick example here. In this triangle below, what is the value of c? Now, I know that this is an isosceles right triangle because I see that two of the sides are both 4 and I have a 90 degree angle. Because that's true, these sides have the relationship of x, x, and x root 2. So since x is equal to 4 in this case, c would simply be equal to 4 times the square root of 2. Now that's the easier of the two special right triangles. By the way, I'll also say if you have a situation like this where they give you both of those two sides, another approach to take is using the Pythagorean theorem. You know the Pythagorean theorem will always work when you know two out of three sides of a right triangle. It just so happens that these two sides are the same. So you'd have 4 squared plus 4 squared equals c squared. Excuse me, so let's look at the other triangle. We have a 30-60-90 triangle here. And in a 30-60-90 triangle, you're going to look for a 90 degree angle, a 30 degree angle, and or a 60 degree angle. Remember, the angles of a triangle add up to 180, so if you know two, you can always figure out the third. <coughs> In a 30, 60, 90 triangle, the relationship is a little bit different. The side that's across from the 30 is kind of like our base side. It's the most important side. We call it x. If that side is x, then the hypotenuse, the side that's across from the 90 degree angle, is going to be 2x. And then lastly, the side that's across from the 60 degree angle is going to be x times the square root of 3. So again, let's look at another example where we can see how these values might play out. So here in this example, what are the values of a and c in the triangle below? Now, if you look at this triangle right here, it's actually a bad problem. I should have put in a little bit more information like we have a 60 degree angle right there. Without that, I can't assume it's a 30, 60, 90 triangle, even if it looks like it. So if that's my 60, this has to be my 30. And 4 is in the same position as x. It's across from the 30 degrees. So this is like my x. This is the hypotenuse, so that's like 2x. And this is the longer side, so that's like x root 3. So if x is equal to 4, then a is equal to x times the square root of 3. So that would be 4 times the square root of 3. And c would equal 2 times x, or 2 times 4 is equal to 8. All right, so that's how we can set up with the 30, 60, 90 triangle. And we'll practice a couple more here in just a second. I wanted to talk about what you're going to see on the Ames reference sheet. So you don't have to memorize these formulas, but you should know where to look for them and what they're going to look like. So what I've done here is I've copied directly from, you know, the state website or whatever. I've copied exactly what you're going to see on your little formula sheet. So there's this little section on the second page that says right triangle relationships. It has 30, 60, 90 triangle, and it's exactly like I showed you where you see the x, the 2x, and the x times square root 3. For the 45, 45, 90 triangle, same thing. We have x, x, and x root 2. So let's use this to find the missing sides in these examples. Here in this triangle, I see that the two angles on the bottom are congruent, so it must be a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So this is my x, that's my x, this is my x root 2. Well, if this is 5 root 2, and that's the same as x root 2, 
Each of these sides must be 5. Let's look at the next one here. We have x, 7 root 3, and 30 degrees. Now, 30, remember, is across from the small side. So this is usually my x. This is usually x root 3. And this is usually 2x. I know this says x, but let's just mark it like it is in the diagram for a minute, and we'll just figure out what the values are. Now, if this is 7 root 3, and that's usually x root 3, then that means that this side, my x, must be 7. Then this side must be twice as big as that, so this side must be 14. So it's kind of like in this case, my x that it's looking for is equal to 14. If too many x's is confusing for you, another strategy that you might use would be to, instead of using x's like we have in the diagram, you might use y's. So this is y, this would be 2y, this is y root 3, just so you're not confusing your two variables. Okay, last one. We want to solve for b. All right, again, across from the 30 is like your x. Across from the 60 is like your x root 3. And then across from the 90 is the hypotenuse. That's your 2x. So this is 8. If 8 is equal to 2x, then x must be equal to 4. So now I know that that side is 4. And then x times the square root of 3 would be 4 times the square root of 3. So in this case, b is equal to 4 times the square root of 3. All right, now let's talk about what you need to know about trigonometry. First of all, when you have a right triangle, you're going to be specifically looking at the relationship between the sides and the angles. And there's a specific way that we name them. So angles are named with capital letters, sides are named with lowercase letters, and you always use the letter of the angle across from it. So for example, if I'm looking at angle A here, the side across from that is going to be called side A. And notice the use of the upper and lowercase letters. So here we have angle C. Across from that we have side C, using a lowercase c. Now that we know that, let's look at the relationship between the sides and the angles and how we name them. If I'm looking specifically here at angle A, then I say this side, the side that's across from the 90 degrees, is the hypotenuse. Of course, the hypotenuse is always across from the 90 degree angle in any right triangle. So there's the hypotenuse. But if I'm looking at angle A, the side of the triangle that is attached to that angle we call the adjacent side. Sometimes we abbreviate that with ADJ. Then the side that is all the way across, side A, is what we call the opposite side, and we abbreviate that with OPP. Now, it's different if you were looking at angle B. Angle B is here, and so that's going to change the relationship between where your opposite and adjacent sides are. C is still the hypotenuse across from the 90, like always. But now the side that's attached to angle B is the adjacent, and the side that's across is the opposite. So in this case, if I'm looking at angle B, A is the adjacent side, and B is the opposite side. So let's use that to set up some of our trigonometric ratios. So let's look at the trigonometric ratios of a right triangle. You don't need to memorize any of these. You can look at them on the Ames reference sheet. Some of you might have heard the phrase Sokotoa, which is a nice way of remembering this. So if you're familiar with that, use it. It just says that the sine is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse, the cosine is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and the tangent is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. But we see all that given to us right here, so no need to memorize that. So the sine of A is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse, which is C, so A over C. The cosine of A is equal to the adjacent side, which is B, divided by the hypotenuse, which is C. And then finally, the tangent of A, if we're looking at A still, is equal to the opposite side divided by the adjacent side, so A over B. Now, if we were to switch this up and instead be looking at angle B, those ratios are going to change a little bit. Because now if I'm looking at B, this side is opposite, and this side is the adjacent side. So you can see that the sine of B is equal to the opposite over the adjacent, or B over C. The cosine of B is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. hypotenuse. What did I say, adjacent? Opposite over adjacent. 
Okay, so the sine of B is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse, or B over C. The cosine of B is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse, which is A over C. And then the tangent of B is equal to the opposite over the adjacent side, or B over A. Like I said, make sure you're looking back at the reference sheet. And another thing that really, really helps is labeling the sides of your triangle. So let's look at an example. If I wanted to find the sine of D, the angle that I'm interested in is angle D. So right there at angle D, I'm going to go in and label, this is the hypotenuse, this is the side attached, so it's the adjacent, and then over here must be the side opposite. So I know that the sine of D is opposite over hypotenuse, or A over C, but in this case the opposite is 24, and the hypotenuse is 26 then you could reduce that. The cosine of D is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Well, the adjacent is A, the hypotenuse is 26. And then the tangent of D is equal to the opposite over the adjacent, so that would be 24 over 10. So always go back to this sheet and label the sides opposite adjacent and hypotenuse. You'll set it up right every single time. One last example that I wanted to talk about um, again, on your Ames reference sheet, you can see that you see those ratios right here. They don't call it opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse, but look at here. They're taking the sine of A, the cosine of A, and the tangent of A. So if you're looking at A, the sine would be A over C, the cosine would be B over C, and the tangent would be A over B. So that's how you're going to get those formulas and just relate that to opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. Okay? Now, this is on the second page of your reference sheet, and all these right triangle formulas are kind of right there in the middle, so you know exactly where to look for them if you need them. I wanted to give you one example of how you might see some of this trigonometry. There's no calculators on the Ames test, so there's not really a lot that you can do with the trigonometry in terms of solving for missing sides and missing pieces. So you're more likely to see questions that ask you, how do you set the problem up? So which trigonometric ratio would you use to solve this problem? So here's an example. Which trigonometric ratio could be used to find the height of the tree? So in this case, the unknown value is the height of the tree. I'm going to call that x. Again, look to the problem to see what type of variable they use in the answers. So if I'm looking at x over here, and I know this angle, this side would be the side that is opposite that angle, and this side would be the hypotenuse. Well, which trigonometric ratio uses opposite and hypotenuse? The sine does, so I would set up the sine of 38 is equal to my unknown x divided by my known 125. And really, this is as much as you can do with the problem on the AIMS, so they'll look for those types of ratios. All right, we'll practice setting these up, working with sines, cosines, and our special right triangles in class later today.